Let's do case study one. It sh it shows the figure in which path of a diver is shown when she takes a jump from diving board. This path is parabola. Now any st standing on the diving board which is forty eight meter above level, and she takes a dive into the pool. Her height in feet at any time t is given by this polynomial. The first question based on this is find the value of k, right? Now in this expression we have three things. We have h height and at any time t. We have the time t and we have k. Now, now when the time t is zero, her height above water level is forty eight. Right. So let us substitute here. Forty eight is equal to minus sixteen into zero square plus eight into zero plus k. So this gives you forty eight is equal to zero plus zero plus k. Hence c is the right option. That is forty eight. Question number forty two says at what time she will touch water in the pool. So when she touches water in the pool, at that time her height is zero, right? And we have to find out the time and value of k. We have found in the first part. We shall take it as forty eight only. So let us apply in this polynomial. Height at that time is zero minus sixteen. T is t only t square plus eight t plus forty eight. So this gives us a quadratic equation. You can see eight is common throughout. So I shall divide throughout by eight. Zero is equal to minus two t square plus one t plus six. Bringing to left hand side, I get two t square minus t minus six is equal to zero. Splitting the middle term, I get t minus two into two t plus three is equal to zero. T either t is equal to two or t is equal to minus three by two. Clearly, this will be rejected, and B option is the right answer. T is equal to two. Question number forty three says that Rita's height is given by another polynomial p t whose zeros are minus one and two. So let The polynomial is t plus one because minus one is a zero, and t minus two because plus two is a zero, along with a factor that is k. So this gives me, you know, that k is a constant factor. If zeros are minus one and two, we can have infinite polynomials whose zeros are minus one and two. So k into t square. Let's multiply t into t is t square plus one t minus two t. Is minus one t plus one into minus two is minus two. So this is my answer. I don't know what is k. So for k, see a option is does not match. B option also does not match. In C option, twenty four factor is common throughout. But in C, if I divide throughout by twenty four, t square minus t plus two. So again, this option does not match. But in D part, if I divide throughout by minus twenty four, I get t square minus t minus two. So this is my correct option, which matches this. Hence, D is the correct answer. Question number forty four gives us a polynomial q t whose sum of the zeros and product of the zeros is given. Now, do you remember the formula when sum and product is given? It is x square. Minus sum into x plus product. Now here we have to find it in t. So I have it t square minus sum of the zeros is one. So one t plus product. Now product is minus six. So I get minus six. So this gives me t square minus t minus six. But again there is a k factor. There must be a constant factor. Because a and b options are not matching here, so there is a constant factor. Let us see what's that. If in c option I divide throughout by minus eight, for c option let me divide throughout by minus eight. What do I get? I get t square 
minus t minus 6 and t square minus t minus 6 yes now this option matches so c is the correct answer question number 45 says if zero of this polynomial are negative of each other then find the value of k now let alpha and minus alpha are the zeros because they are given to be negative now clearly we should use the sum because sum of the zeros is going to be zero right and formula for sum of the zeros is minus b over a so i can say that alpha plus minus alpha is equal to minus b now what is b minus k minus 3 upon a a is minus 12 so this gives me 0 is equal to minus k plus 3 upon minus 12 minus 12 on multiplication becomes 0 and we get the value of k as 3 so a is the correct option i hope you are clear with the case study 1 now let's go to case study 2 let's first see what the case study 2 is it shows a hockey field and it is rectangular in shape. The main points are it is 100 yards by 60 yards. And the inner edges of the post must be 3.66 meters that is 4 yards apart. And lower edge must be 2.14 meters that is 7 feet above the ground. Each team has 11 players. We are given forward players shown by A, B, C and D. Midfielders by E, F and G. Full backs by H, I and J. And goalie by player k now let us go to the questions but one thing i must mention when the question is so long do not try to read it word by word just give it a look what the question is about and then just reach the questions read the question and then you can come back to the proper uh, explanation of the question in question number 46 we have to find the centroid of triangle e h j so first let's find out the coordinates of e h j now point e is this point e is 2 comma 1 point h is here which is minus 2 comma 4 and point j is here which is minus 2 comma minus 2 now we know that formula for centroid is x1 plus x2 plus x3 by 3 comma y1 plus y2 plus y3 by 3. You don't need to write the formula. It is for your understanding I have written it. So this gives me 2 plus minus 2 plus minus 2 upon 3 comma. Now take y coordinates 1 plus 4 minus 2 divided by 3. So on solving I get minus 2 by 3 comma 3 by 3. That is 1. So do we have an option? Minus 2 by 3 and 1. Yes, very first option A is the correct answer. Question number 47 says, P needs to be at equal distance from A and G such that A, P, G are in straight line also. So P has to be equal distance also with G and it has to be in straight line also. So clearly P is the midpoint of A, G. Now let us see what are the coordinates of A. Coordinates of A are A is here 3 comma 6 3 comma 6 and what are the coordinates of G? G point is here. So coordinates of G are 1 comma minus 3. Right? So what are we supposed to do? We are supposed to find out the midpoint of AG and you know that formula for midpoint is x1 plus x2 by 2 comma y1 plus y2 by 2. 2. So let us apply it. 3 plus 1 by 2 comma 6 plus minus minus 3 by 2. So this gives me 4 by 2 that is 2 and 6 minus 3 by 2 that is 3 by 2. So which is the right option? 2 comma 3 by 2. C is the right option. Question number 48 says point on x axis equidistant from i and e. So let the point on x axis is x comma 0. Now it is equidistant from i and e. Now let's see the coordinates of i. Coordinates of i, i is this which are minus 1 and 1 and e. 
coordinates of e are e is here that is 2 comma 1 so the question becomes applying distance formula i get x plus 1 whole square plus 0 minus 1 whole square is equal to x minus 2 whole square plus 0 minus 1 that is minus 1 whole square so you see this factor goes off because it is same we are simply to solve this i get x square plus 1 plus 2x is equal to x square plus 4 minus 4x x square also gets cancelled so this gives me 2x plus 4x that is 6x is equal to 4 minus 1 that is 3 so x is equal to 1 by 2 so 1 by 2 comma 0 is the correct answer 1 by 2 comma 0 not just 1 by 2 because it is the point hence a is the correct answer question number 49 says find q such that its distance from k is twice the distance from e so like this is k and this is e so q is almost twice the distance from e and also they are collinear that means they are on the straight line so let us write down the coordinates of k and e now the coordinates of k are minus 4 and 1 and coordinates of e are 2 and 1 now we need to find q such that this ratio is 2 is to 1 and let the coordinates of q are x comma y now let us apply the section formula to get q x comma y is equal to 2 into 2 we have to cross multiply 2 into 2 that is 4 plus 1 into minus 4 that is minus 4 divided by 2 plus 1 comma now for y coordinates 2 will be multiplied with 1 that is 2 this 1 will be multiplied with 1 that is 1 divided by 2 plus 1 that is 3 so my answer comes out to be 0 by 3 that is 0 comma 3 by 3 that is 1 so 0 comma 1 should be the correct answer yes so b is the right option question number 50 says point on y axis that is 0 comma y which is equidistant from b and c is dash so this point let it be p so p is equidistant from b and c now let's see the coordinates of b the coordinates of b are 4 comma 3 you can see in the diagram and the coordinates of c are 4 comma minus 1 now we are supposed to find out its coordinates let's apply distance formula 0 minus 4 whole square plus y minus 3 whole square is equal to 0 minus 4 whole square plus y plus 1 whole square because we change the sign y minus minus 1 so this gets cancelled no need to calculate i am left with y square plus 9 minus 6y is equal to y square plus 1 plus 2y students don't think of cancelling these squares the uh, this square we if we cancel this we we shall not be able to solve it right now again y square gets cancelled minus 6y minus 2y is minus 8y 1 minus 9 is minus 8 so value of y comes out to be 1 and my answer will be 0 comma 1 mind it not just 1 0 comma 1 so do we have an option yes so d is the correct answer so i hope you have benefited from the video i have uploaded all the three parts now complete sample paper standard is available on the channel please do not forget to share and subscribe if you like the video thank you so much happy practicing